As Christians, we Muslims are expecting Christ's return as well. Okay. Yes. Now, listen carefully. It's the, it's the million dollar question. When is Jesus coming? When is he coming back? Listen carefully, my friend. The New Testament and the writings of Paul, as I made mention, was an indicator that he's going to make an imminent return. Like a thief in the night. Didn't happen. Hasn't happened yet. Yes, but no, but the, but, but the prophecies are very specific. That it was... Sorry. So, the prophecies are very specific. That it's going to happen imminently and did not happen. To the extent Paul says, don't even get married, get ready for him coming. Didn't happen. Your famous New Testament scholar and historian C.S. Lewis, he said, the prophecies of the return of Christ, which were deemed as not happening, are the most embarrassing verses in the entire New Testament. Now, let's understand the Islamic perspective on his coming in conjunction with what you're wearing. What is this, sir? Uh, what is the game, as they say? Before Christ return, there has to be a setting. When the Antichrist comes, the one-eyed beast, there will be a eulogy to him. That eulogy will be, whatever God has revealed, we're going to kick it out. What the, the Antichrist system will be in place, we're going to impose it. Let's impose it. Brother, let me just... Three things. Feminism. Atheism. LGBTQ, which you're looking to claim back with, with the help of God. Now, Mark chapter 13. The head of woman is in Corinthians as well. The head of woman is, I'm asking you to help me. The head of woman is God. man. man. The, the head of man is Christ. The head of no, Christ no, is. No, but woman, woman is man. Listen, listen to me. This, I'm, re I'm reciting the Bible to you. Yeah, yeah. In the book of Corinthians, it says, the head of woman is man, the head of man is Christ, the head of Christ is God. The head of what? The woman is who? Oh, you said man. Okay. It's man. man. Husband. 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 But what's happening in this society today? The head of the house is the woman. woman. Yeah, I see. You That's see. Good. Right. Listen carefully, my friend. What, uh, what does the Quran say? Something not too dissimilar to that Corinthians passage. Yeah. The believing women are devote who are devoted to Allah and by proxy to their husbands. So you have to obey your husbands, according to the Quranic narrative. You can see the similarity there. But the system in place is empowering women to the extent that men are now subdued. Families need fathers, fathers for justice. You heard of these organizations? Why have they come about? Because the subjugation of men is now paramount. This is one of the signs that Christians need to wake up yeah, yeah, to absolutely. understand of what will be the setting before Christ comes. Right. So everything which God has ordained, they are going to do the contrary. Yeah. So where Allah has said, the head of the house is the man, they're going to do it the other way around. Yeah. Where God has forbidden what you got there. Yeah. In the, we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. We know what happened. Yes, yes. They are imposing that. You go, to, you go to our schools now. This is absolutely rampant within yeah. the schools. Yeah. You're having your compelled to to learn about it. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to d resist it, they'll come down on your ton of bricks because they've infiltrated right. the upper echelons, you That's see. Right. Right. You know, they work, you know, you've got to watch a few films to understand how they work. One interesting film which people may laugh at is called The Brides of Dracula, yeah. 1973. Yes. They get these types of high-flying Caucasian people who formulate world affairs uh -huh. and they infiltrate them and what happens it's a long thing but if you're prepared to listen clerks yes. to a court in central london yeah yeah women well women or oh, women so what they say after a long day's work to the top lawyers and to the top judges man you're every you got everything you got wealth you got everything you want but they want more so they you know what they say to them come we will take you somewhere so after work they give them something that they are, is beyond their Ferraris yeah, or yeah. their mansions. Yeah. They go into the supernatural. They go into the occult. So when they go into these seances and they meet those who have sold their souls to Satan and they see miracles coming, 
in the name of Satan. Right? And then they, what they do, they become wowed. Yes. So then what they do, the Satan himself supervises yes. the meetings. Right, this is what you're gonna, this is what you're gonna propel. Yeah. Because these formulators, who have formulated world affairs at the top, yes. they are now eulogizing the, the, yeah. the Satan. Yes. So, so they are now propelling this. Yes. I love that show. I, I, I like it. I respect you deeply and I, re I, I really do respect you for wearing that. Okay, and you're a Christian, yes? You can call it that. You can call it that, no yeah. problem. Where are you from? Which country? Jamaica. 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 Nice. Yeah. So my friend, listen carefully. So you've got these three things happening. They are in alliance. LGBTQ, feminism, atheism. Yes. This will be if you want to call it a new, to make our Christian friends happy, an unholy trinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a, a front. Yeah. So when Jesus comes, they'll, they, he, this is what he would resist. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. In Israel today, the only country in the Middle East which promotes and accentuates LGBTQ movement, propagates it. No other country in the Middle East yeah. does that. Yet imagine, the common understanding given in the book of Revelation, when Jesus returns, he will crush the enemies of Israel. Yeah. So are you saying to me, Jesus will represent Israel who are pro-LGBTQ, the very Jesus who supposedly obliterated them in Sodom and Gomorrah in the Old Testament? Well, my understanding of Israel, modern Israel, is not Israel. Israel is not Israel. Modern day Israel, Israel of all is different from modern day Israel because Israel themselves rejected Jesus. They rejected Jesus. So Jesus had to choose people outside of Israel to carry on his work. I mean, excuse me. So, Christ himself says in the New Testament, I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go not forth to the Gentiles. Go not to the non-Jews. He says it in the Gospel of Mark. I'm not sure about My phrase, that because trust me, I know that I've read Jesus the Bible. Said ten five. Matthew 10, 5. Said, well done, well remembered. Other sheep I have, which is not of this fold. Pardon? Jesus did say that there's other sheep that he has that are not of this fold, which means that there are people outside of Israel that belongs to him. But that's that but that goes against this particular verse which clearly states that he's only come, listen to the key words, he's only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go not to the Gentiles, he says. Go not, he clearly states that. Who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews. Matthew chapter 10 verse 5, but that the brother has said. Very, very clear. So listen to me carefully. Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Now, I hope you got that right, bro. <laughs> You're only checking you out. Yeah, because I normally yeah. I make a mistake. I say five and then ten. Yeah. But that's um, less than a peacemaker. So. Okay, excellent. So now... Yeah. Okay, check that. Go on, you have a check first. It's also in Mark's Gospel as well. You Same thing. Matthew 5. 10. Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. Don't get it mixed up with 5, 6, 5, okay. 9. I usually have these verses in my, in my head, but I can't remember it today for some reason. I have... Yes. I think you should talk to him if you can or... Ah, okay. So I understand that now. What he's trying to say there is that yeah, I just want to check it out. They thought, or they believed, they thought that it was only the Israelites that were his. So Jesus was telling that they're not the lost people, so you don't have to go to them. So the Gentiles, the Gentiles and the Samaritans, you don't have to go to them because they are his as well. He doesn't say that though in the passage. He doesn't passage. say that, but that's what he's referring to. No, but that is what you're assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the verse is very because clear. He gave, he gave a story. Jesus gave a story. He said there was a man that was beaten and left by the wayside for death. Yeah, I need it. And he was telling them that the Israelites walked past that, that, that injured man on the road. And the only person that took up that sick man on, his, on the donkey was Samaritan. 
Yeah, but these are just listen. These are ex exceptions. Listen, I'll, I'll bring you the verse. I don't know what you've read, but you've assumed something into the text initially. Just give me two seconds. One second. I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what verse? Did, what, what what did he give it to you? Anyway, it's in Matthew yeah. chapter Matthew yeah. chapter 15, verse 24. Yeah. Christ says, I was only sent to the people of Israel. They are like a flock of lost sheep. And he says, go forth not to the Gentiles, meaning the non-Jews. Yeah. So he only came for a select people at a select time. And that's when he said that it's not fair to give the scraps to, uh, yeah. uh, to the, yes. It's not fair to give the, uh, um, the scraps to the dogs. He's referring to non-Gentiles, sorry, to Gentiles as dogs. Yes, my friend, it's there. Oh, my friend, listen to me. We're not misquoting to you, okay? Okay, so let me explain something to you further. Let me explain something to you. Oh, we were speaking about that shirt, which I really like. Yeah. Now, we've got to bring it back. Thing is, this is going to be the preamble before he, come, before he comes, you see. These are, the biggest, these are the biggest situations that people of faith have to be aware of. Muslims yeah. and Christians, we have a commonality, which is Jesus. We love him. We Muslim, you, you must know this, yeah? We're not antichrists. That's right. Okay, it's very important to understand this. But what it is, the powers that be, they realize this and they want to divide Muslims and Christians, yeah. essentially speaking. Yeah. We even believe there will be a unification amongst Muslims and Christians which will go against the anti God system, yeah. which this is all spiraling towards. Yeah. It's all spiraling towards an anti God system against a God system yes. and this will come into a clash. It's inevitable our hadiths make mention of this, eschatology. Eschatology means the study of the future events which are to occur. So, what we say to you though, however, as a side point, understand who God is and who Christ makes as God. Jesus says in John 17, 3, for this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God yeah, yeah. and whom you have sent yeah. the messenger Jesus yeah. it does not say he's God so our issue with Christians who believe that Jesus is God is this central issue what, what do you believe about him let me ask you first well uh, we believe I believe one God fabulous and I believe that Jesus was made by God and dwelled in him that is figurative, like it's not literal, like it's called figurative language. Because I think it's in Ephesians yeah. that Christians also have the fullness of God within them. But that yes, doesn't mean that, yes, yes. yeah. I think most Christians do get uh, the, the Godhead mixed up. Yeah, most, but, most yeah. of them believe in three, three gods. Yes. I don't. Okay. I, don't, I believe there was just one God. Yes. Because he even says in the Bible that he's, uh, there's only one God and there's none beside him. Yes. And Jesus, when Jesus was on earth, it was God himself that dwell in him so let me explain to you let me this i think i'm i'm because you seem like a very reasonable person so i think i can change your mind how first of all it's very important to realize in the greek or roman world that jesus lived in what does the word theos mean individuals of a higher disposition they were also given the title of god even the satan in two corinthians is referred to as God of this world. Right. So this was a widespread title used for someone who is of a highly yeah. ilk. Yeah. Now, in terms of who Christ says he himself was, he doesn't go around saying, here you are guys, I'm the one foretold in the Old Testament as God, worship me. He never says this. In fact, don't you think it's very interesting? In the Old Testament, God is not shy to say that I am your only God. Worship none right. others beside me. That's if you worship others beside me, that's true. we know God that's says, true. finish that person. That's true. So when Jesus appears at the Mount of Olives for the first time in Mark's Gospel. But he was the same. Jesus was the same person that was God. That's what we're saying to you. Listen to two different people. That's one. Okay. Yeah. One person. So you're a oneness, are you? Yeah. You're a oneness Pentecostal? No, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, you're, you're just a one I believe, I'm not oneness, I'm oneness, I'm actually, um, I'm actually, I belong to the person, I belong to the denomination that the Quran refers to as the people of the world. And what is that? 
Seventh-day Seventh, okay, interesting. So you keep you keep the, uh, the the laws, the Sabbath and so forth. But what I'm saying to you, listen carefully though, despite this, we need to understand who Jesus is, yeah. despite that fact. I mean, obviously, if you went in the corner there and listened to Christians there, they would see you as a heretic. I know, a lot of them do. They, yeah, yeah and particularly they would. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but what I'm saying to you, my friend, is you said still you believe that Christ is that in an in that one of God, which is God himself. Yeah. But what we're saying to you, don't get confused upon this. Let's let the man speak for himself. So he speaks for himself. John 17, 3, he claims to be a messenger. Yeah. It doesn't say he's God in the Gospels, in Mark chapter 6, yeah. verse 4. Let me explain. This is in John 3, 16. Yeah. Actually, they've got, the, they've got the terminology mixed up over there. It's for God so level of the world that he gave his only begotten. The word begotten there is not there. It's actually a Greek word called monogenes. Monogenes means one who is a unique son of God. Meaning born, as we know, of the virgin birth. So that's the actual word. It, it, yeah, monogenes does not mean begotten. It means a unique in its kind, unique, one of a kind. So that's all it's referring to. Now in terms of son, this is widespread amongst many, many other people. It's many, and it defines... When the disciples did ask him yes. to show, show, me, show me God. Yeah. And he said, well, you've seen me. I'll, I'll explain this to you. Yeah. This is in reference to John chapter 14, verse 9, when Philip says to Christ, show us the Lord. Yeah. And Philip and Jesus says, Philip, I have been with you for such a long time, and have you not said that he that has seen me has seen the Father? But we know Jesus is not the Father. He is separate from the Father. And let me explain to you further, because if you read further, it says in the, his words. So you can see Christ through God in the words that he speaks. Yes. Further to that, in John chapter 5, verse 37, yeah. it says God cannot be seen at any time. No. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, same thing as well. God cannot be seen yes. at any time. So what we're saying to you that, but Jesus was seen. Yeah. He was there. So when he makes this utterance, yes, it was a, it, it, I believe he was, um, he was God that was in him. Yeah, so what we say, no, what we say, he was empowered by God. Yeah. But we don't say God Almighty himself was living in Jesus. Because if you are then to be consistent, then when the Christians are referred to as well, I think it's Colossians chapter 2, who, are, who the fullness of God lives. That doesn't make them God though, does it? It means they're empowered by God. Jesus was the only person that was born unnatural, which means that they didn't need a, a, a male to... Um, it was, a, it was a unique birth, yeah, yes. Right. But, but what we're saying to you, that doesn't then make him God, rather, look, King Melchizedek of Salem, Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter 7, I think. He was born without father, without mother, having no beginning, no end. Right. But we don't believe him to be God, do we? But he would have more... I personally believe that God was in him. God was in him in that metaphorical sense, just like God was in the Christians as well. Same thing, it's exactly uh, the same. It's different because he, what he does, what he did. How is it different? What he did. What he did was the miracles he made, he did, but also he died. Yeah, but that doesn't make him God though. I mean, Elijah, he also rose again as well. Yeah. He died, didn't he? But Elijah doesn't make him God. These are some miracles bestowed to them. Now, now let me explain to you something. Now, I hope I've made you understand that because you still are maintaining that the God dwelt in him, but what I'm saying to you, this is a metaphor in the sense that God is empowering him. Further to the evidence for that, if you are going to be consistent in your argument, because you've read this, then you would have to make that same conclusion based in closing, I think it's chapter two, which says the fullness, the, the fullness of God dwelt in the Christians. But you don't then say, but, but, then, but then you say, yeah, let's go to the Quran. So the Quran says that he was born with miraculous birth, a virgin birth, who is one who is close to God, the, the anointed one, the, the Masi, the Messiah, uh, who is close to God, loved by God, revered by uh, God, a mighty messenger. The Quran says in, in the Quran, very clear, Allah says, we will be asked on the day of judgment, did you say that you are God, part of the Trinity? And he will say, how can I say such a thing? Uh, for only uh, how, when you are the only God. So the Quran makes it clear. And we can see this as well in Matthew chapter 7, yeah. verse 21 to 23. 
where he said, not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So what he's trying to show there is that only God's will will suffice. So by you calling him Lord, Lord, which simply means what? It means one of a higher disposition based upon the Greek word for kurios. In the book of Genesis, we see that um, Sarah is referred to Abraham as her Lord, but he's not the Lord Almighty, it's just a higher title. That's right, that's you see, this is the confusion in the Greek Rome, the Greek language did in the New Testament. It's confusion because to be today in our language, if I say God, we know it's going to reference to the Almighty God, okay? But in those days, it was different. People of a high high carrot high position yes, yes. they would be given that title yes. but that would but the same no god, god but that same title would also be given to god almighty the same thing with lord yes. the term lord would be given to human beings or powerful judges but the term lord would also be given to god as well yes. so why is this all this confusion because they never distinguished between the, the, the distinguished but you can see within for example it says in in, in the bible that in, in acts chapter 8 that um, it says that God made this man Jesus Lord. It's something a title in the back. God said so God made him Lord, which means one of our position. 1 Corinthians 8 6. Distinguish it. Paul says, For unto us there is one God the Father, and unto us there is one Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ. In which sense is he Lord? He's Lord in the sense of one who exalted by God. God made him Lord and Saviour. So that means so obviously if you're made something. You're not, that is not yours in the first place. It's something that you're exalted by God to the level of. So it's brought up by as one who is very close to God. So that's the language that was used by the Greeks, the Greeks at that particular time. A language which we wouldn't use, but it's just attributing the greatness of Christ and bringing him up to God's level by God pushing him up to his level. But that's all it means. So that's why Paul even distinguishes between these terms. I hope this will make sense. I hope we're unraveling some of the confusion of the Bible. But there's no confusion here. Let the man speak for himself, as I said to you previously. He claims to be a prophet. The sign just over here, underneath over here. God sends messengers that you're familiar with. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them. They were messengers of God who came to their communities to bring to them to worshipping God alone. To away from the... Um, you know, where they have fallen into error yeah. and bringing them back. That was the central message yeah. of it, whichever place in history they were sent. And Christ was of the same disposition. He says, of my own free will, I can do nothing. So I hear as my judge and yes. my judgment. So that means he can't of his own free, free will do nothing. Jesus. No, it, what it is, it, it acts, listen carefully my friend. In Acts chapter 2 verse 22, it says, Here Israel, Jesus Christ, a man appointed by God, through whom God did many wonders. So what he's showing is that all these miracles that Jesus did, it was God doing it through him. That's right. Just like, That's right. just like yeah. Moses in the Old Testament. Yeah. Who parted the sea? Moses or God? God. God. But through? through there you are. But Moses is not God though, is he? They, so that's a nice example that I've given. Yeah, but what it was, we believe, and what I believe, that uh, there was so much going on here that God had to, God had to come down and show us how to live. God, if God came as He was, we wouldn't see Him, or we couldn't see Him, or we would have been slain. But you, you would have to come through a man. You know when you say he had to come through the man, yes. and this was the way God was. Where does God actually say this is how he's going to do it? Where? Because you would assume from the Bible itself that he would make such a claim that, listen, guys, it's often Christians say Christ is fully human, 100% human, 100% God. So you would think if this is such a fundamental belief of yours that Christ would say, listen, guys, in the Old Testament, I was foretold as the coming God who is 100% human. But no, we don't have that understanding. This was later an addition That's into right. the... Yeah, so that is not biblical. Biblical is not the case. Biblical is what? Understanding God is one. Yes. Mark 12, 28. Yes. The scribe says, Hear thou, O Israel. When he asked him, What is the greatest of all commandments, Rabbi? He says, Hear thou, O Israel. Your Lord God, the Lord, is one. Yes. 
Yes. in Greek, meaning one cardinal one. Yeah, I believe that. Can we just a bit? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, basically, yeah. So, what we're inviting people to as Muslims is worship the God Almighty One. Yeah. Muhammad, upon whom be peace, is just a messenger of God. Not in Greek, God sends these messengers to bring them back to worshiping God and God alone. This is what Islam's central message is. It clears up the confusion which has been late and the Quran is for all of mankind you've got a nice copy of that in. have a good read of it yeah, understand yeah. it and are there, of the Quran? there are no different there are different translations not versions but that's a big difference that's a common misunderstanding amongst people that the Quran is no we don't have any different versions we've got so for example words will be different if I call you a great man but someone else calls you a top man same thing top same meaning great man Fabulous man. Okay, better. Great man, fabulous man. So that will be just a translation. Because Arabic is such a diverse language that one word can have several different meanings within itself. Yeah. So that's what the Quran therefore teaches that our Lord God is just one. He's unlike his creation. He's not a man, he's not a woman, he's not an idol, he's not a statue. Totally unlike his creation. Hosea 11 9, Numbers 23 19, for your reference. God is not a man. So what we say, this is unfulfilling of God. And we worship, we invite people back to worshiping God alone. And God, so we, we accept all these prophets, great and mighty messengers. Now we pray five times a day. You know this, yes? We bow and prostrate to God. Do you know exactly that that's how the, that they used to pray in the Old Testament? In Nehemiah chapter eight, verse four and six, a verse which the viewers commonly see, uh, use, hear me using. It tells you the exact way the prayers were performed, right. bowing so, and prostrating so, to God. For, for Islam, though, what is the what is the what, what does the Islam believe as the future of this earth? What's going to happen? Yeah, so this earth will one day perish. We're going to be going through certain phases, unlike any phase in human history, yeah. where this, you know ensuing events to occur will happen, and it's all spiraling well, towards that. Usually, so the hope and expectation yeah, yeah, yeah. is then that we will be able to resist this and come together as humans. Allah says in the Quran, and he's appealing to everyone. Allah, let's come to a common terms. Brother, can we, let's come to a common terms as between us and you, us the Muslims and you, people of the book, the Jews, the Christians, and from that matter, everybody else, that we worship none than the one true God. That's the Quran is saying that. So it's actually appealing to everybody. Once we all as humans understand the concept of God, our differences, our animosities will be left aside because we understand, oh yes, our creator is unlike his creation. He's a mighty God, the same God of the Old Testament, New Testament and the Quran. But let's not give that God imagery. Let's not make that God man. So how do we look at people? How do we look at people who refuse to believe what we believe? So we look at them by reasoning them, by speaking to them, by having discussions with them. So for example, we, sp we speak to every, every type of individual. Let's look at, I mean, other religions, Hinduism, for example. Now, on the surface level, people understand, oh, it's a polytheistic faith, which simply uh, believes in idolatry or idol worshiping. But when you examine the intricate details of, the, of their respective scriptures, even they espouse there's only one God, who is unlike his creation. Of, of that God, make no image which is essentially what we see in the other... See, what is, why, how Islam stands out. First of all, we believe it's the express verbatim word of God. The other world scriptures don't make that claim. There are elements of God's word within there, but there are many other authors giving their own slants. It's not coming from one source. So what then happens in every religion bar none, except for Islam, they then make their major protagonists into a form of deity. So Christians have made Christ God, according to different understandings. The Hindus, they have made Vishnu and Ram and Ganesh God. The Buddhists, they have to some extent deified uh, Buddha, or they don't, they don't believe in the one true, but they're still, and you look at the other religions as well. So they make their major protagonists in some capacity to be God. But Islam, no, the Prophet Muhammad upon him in peace, absolutely clear in the Quran, is no more than a messenger. Many messages were sent before him. So hence, by this understanding, yeah, Islam makes, because his concept is beautiful, you see. A, a being, unlike his creation, but he's very near to you, observes every single movement of yours. He's nearer to you than your jugular vein in your neck. 
which is a metaphor that is close to you. It doesn't literally mean he's stuck in your jugular vein. Yeah, right. yeah. So this is what we're trying to invite people to. And then one day we're going to die and we're going to be accountable. So as far as I would be concerned, I've given you the message. And you know in your heart it makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah. That creation cannot be God. But when God created the universe, he must have been unlike the universe. He's created it. He's beyond the universe. So that means we don't give the creation the same impact as the creator who is unique, who's all powerful, who is beyond. As me and you speak now, we've got time, matter, space, energy between us. That's a creation of God. Yes. But he must he must have been beyond that, you see. So when we speak to atheists, we've got some good arguments which we present to them and usually they're silent. Continue. So you're not okay if it doesn't matter to you. So what I'm invited to my friend, so when, I, when I saw that, I was thinking, yeah, this guy's on my way on my wavelength. And we believe we're gonna have a unification. Unify it against the system which is propelling itself. Right. It's in every avenue. Yes. I'm so proud that you're wearing that because you are you're taking a stand. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you, you could even you could even be at a point where you're where you're at risk yourself. If you don't go down to Mardi Gras <laughs> on in the central London sometimes when they're all having their runabout, you know, they could just give you a clip around the air, but you want to be careful my friend. But I, I respect you, you're very brave. So in this and this is all the run-up to this. We are going to be entering a, a form of history unlike any other period where two fathers are going to pick up their, chi their child from the school, like Elton John and his partner is picking up his, and off on the boat he goes to you know, lavish it up. What he's doing to those kids, only God knows. Right, so that's another thing. Right, so what's happening here? These are the, because this has never happened in human history like it is. But it's a triumvirate. They've come together, an anti-God alliance to propel whatever God has revealed, no man, we're going to do to the opposite yeah. and we're going to be in power and there's nothing you can do about yeah. it. Yeah. That is what it's all about. Yeah. And they're in all different positions. They may be few in number, but they're in positions of dominance and power. Yeah. Right from the top. Yeah. Yeah. And if you expose them, they'll come after you. Even, come me, after you. Yeah. even me speaking, and this is going to all go out on YouTube, yeah. they can just mark out this guy who comes to Stratford. Let's see what he's all about. That's a, this is reality, this is not some conspiracy nut nut. If you go against the established system and you become a threat to them, boom, they'll, they'll come after you. And they don't care, look what they're doing to Andrew Tate. You know, what they're doing to him. He hasn't spoken anything ill towards. They can't find any, they just stuffed him because he spoke up against the system. So my friend, this is all propelling towards that. Study Islamic eschatology, the Hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace. They are very, very clear. And this is all coming. So whatever I've said to you is in conjunction with the Islamic narrative. There was a, there was a preacher by the name of um, Dr. Miles Monroe. Have you heard of him? I haven't. He speaks heavily against um, LGBTQ. Wow. What happened to him? One day he was flying in his jet and he just... Gone. Gone. Gone, sir. <laughs> Another one you can check out on the quiet. From Trinidad, Professor Tony Martin. Yeah. You know him? I've heard of him. Ooh. Check it out on Rumble. Yeah. On Rumble. Just written to his 35 minute lecture on the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. Yeah. It will blow your mind away. Who were the main beneficiaries of the slave? Well, the Zionists. Yes. yes. The Zionists were the main beneficiaries. Did you know that? You know the common perception? White Caucasians in the US, they enslaved the black people, took them to plantation fields and did their evil to them. Did you know 76% of the landowners who got these estates were Zionists? Seven, the common notion you have is the Ku Klux type clan figure in the deep south of the US who is doing the evil acts against black people, that was just very much in a minority, often on the orders of their Zionist masters, yes. who were the owners of the land yes. in the US where they went to work in plantation fields. Check out Tony Martin, the senior professor. The man was a strong man. Zip is gone. They got rid of him. Check him out on the, on, um, you can check him out now on Wikipedia. Gone, fit young man, gone. No explanation to his death, he just says un he met an untimely death. Check it out, Tony Martin on Rumble. You can watch it on Rumble, it's a 35-minute video. Boy, he exposes the whole system upside down. And what I'm saying to you, my friend, 
There's another game I'm going to say to you off camera. And I, I don't think I can risk it at, at the moment. Yeah. But I'm, on a, I'm serious, I'm afraid I'm so it's going to shock you to pieces. Yeah. This one will shock you to pieces. But what I will say, I want you to watch two films. One is Trading Places with Eddie Murphy, 1983. Yeah, one, yeah. And the second film, same actor, 40 years later, January 2023. You people. And I will discuss this with you off camera. And I want you to know another game which you can't fathom is going on, sir. But let me tell you about that. Uh, so we're going to finish off the discussion now. Nice speaking to the pleasant gentleman. I need to speak to him off camera. But this is some serious information that we're going to. May Allah guide him, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wow. Well, my friend, listen to me carefully. I'm going to shock you now. And this is not me, not, me not mad man. You know, me not mad man. Me know what we say. Listen to me carefully. Me. 